Well, hello, my pretties and my uglies and my in-betweens, all of you E's. My name is Steph Satani, and I am the host of a comedy advice podcast. Welcome to my domain. This is a very humble domain. It's not a .com, it's a .org, because I am just a small little organization trying to help you chuckle, just trying to crank up the chuckle factory. And I don't have any workers because I've been hit hard by COVID. Where am I going with this? I don't know. Shut down the factory and open up the <laughs> intro factory, where I'm going to give you a little intro of this episode that's just it's it's almost ready to go it's been in the slow cooker for a couple of days i've just been adding some spices tasting here and there no nope needs a little bit more salt no you know what though i think the meat the main part of the dish was just ready and that was the guest jason banks and he's not just a piece of meat no that's not what i'm getting at right there he is a hilarious comedian he's also a tiktok star a TikTok constellation, perhaps, because he's more than just a star. He's got his characters that he's developed and his audience that he's developed. He's got around 4.5 million followers on TikTok. He's got about 500,000 on Instagram. This guy is a hoot. I think that's the quote from the New York Times. And on the podcast, he was absolutely awesome. I feel really lucky to have been able to have had him. It sounds, again, like he's just a piece of meat to me, but he's not. We had a great time just chatting it up, talked a little bit about his intro into comedy, his intro into TikTok, how it's changed his comedy and how he's really perceptive of his audience and how he's been able to change some material based off of his new audience of plus 4.5 million people. And so it's been really cool. It's a great time. Follow him. Go see him live at the Tempe Improv. Links are in the show notes for that. Please support him. Tell him you loved the show and the podcast. And you thought he and old Steph's, old Steph Meister were, were just, you know, the dynamic duo that Gotham needs. Get Batman out and get these two comedians in. Oh, we will out joke the Joker. Why so serious? That's a pretty good Joker, right? I mean, if Heath Ledger... Well, he is dead, so I don't think he's going to try and apply for the next one. But I think maybe I could be, you know how I got these podcasts. Getting into the show, before I do that, just wanted to let you guys know a little update on my life. I am doing great. I, I'm wearing this bright pink shirt. Maybe it's a salmon. I'm not sure. No, I would say bright pink. Uh, hot pink. Because I am hot with energy, with gratitude steaming hot gratitude it's been a great week i did a show at the house of comedy and that was amazing thank you lamar thank you jasmine for allowing me to get up there on stage and make people laugh i thought it was a really good time again i did i was a guest host so i was up there for two hours the first time this time it was about five to ten minutes because i was a guest where i talked about sugar daddies have a hilarious story where i almost well i mean i did go on a date with a guy but um well, you can you can come see me and find out how that story ended. If you want to see me live, JP's Comedy Club, June 24th through the 26th. Link is not in the show notes, but, you know, come DM me. Come talk to me. Talk to me. You know what? Office hours, the door is always open. So slide in the DM and be like, hey, Steph, can I come see you? And I'll be like, okay, well, if it's at JP's, then yes. But if it's at my house, then double yes. Yeah, I haven't had company in a long time. Let's have some tea and crumps, some old crumpets. All right. Well, I just wanted to finish this off with some shout outs. Thank you, fans that are emerging and uh, bubbling up like you were magma, but now you're lava because you're just hot and steamy and coming out and boiling all over me so it's great i feel the warmth of your love thank you kim specifically for all the youtube comments sharing on twitter all the shout outs it's been amazing samina thank you for the comments thank you for plowing through the whole catalog it seems like you've gone through a hundred plus episodes which is awesome and uh, and you're still you're still there which is a, a great fantastic Andy, thank you for the shout on Instagram. Andy Hoffman, uh, I think your name is. Uh, I don't know why I'm talking like this now, but thank you, Andy. It's been great. Lois, 
no, I don't have a Lois yet. But if there is a Lois listening, please, sh- please do something so I can shout you out. That would be amazing. And then my wife, good old wifey, Bianca Donk. Bianca, thank you so much for all the comedic advice. She gave me a line that last night helped me just kill, just fucking slaughter. It was like a whole herd of cows. And I just plowed them down with that one liner that she gave. So it was awesome uh, for all you vegetarians. It was like there was a field of broccoli. A cruciferous vegetables and I just lit them on fire. It was amazing. So uh, my joke was uh, amazing. And thank you. It wasn't mine. It was my wife's and she gave it to me. So I guess it is mine. I inherited it. Anyway, <laughs> the joke was good. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you guys all for the continued love, the continued support. And if you guys want to continue to support me, those of you that haven't, you're like, I want to shout out, go and shout me out. Give me some love on Instagram, subscribe, leave a review. Um, what else can you do? I don't know. Find something creative way. Cookies. I love cookies. A way to my heart is through my belly. Uh, my little paunch loves some conch or conch. I think they call it. I don't know. It's a delicate dish from delicacy from the Caribbean, maybe. So that specifically will get you a shout out. That's enough for me for, well, that's enough from future me past me is going to give you this episode. So here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and I am your host. Joining me today, oh, oh, what a special guest, Trey Special. You might have seen him, or you might be one of his 4.5 million followers on TikTok, seen him on Laugh Mob's Laugh Tracks, or about to see him headline here in Phoenix, Arizona. Everybody, please welcome Jason Banks. Thank you so much for jumping on the show. Uh, absolutely. I, uh, I didn't check my schedule. I'm, you know, normally I'm busy. I feel like I have a baseball game today for my son at some point. I need to check, but, but, uh, yeah, I, I thought it might be okay to go on the podcast, man. So I, I, yeah, yeah. I've been turning down a lot, man. So, uh, yeah, I kind of get a lot for podcasts all the time. So, uh, yeah, this is one of the few I took, man. So congratulations. Dude, I feel honored. I've actually, I got the <laughs> award. Kidding, <laughs> i've got the award on my mantle right now got jason banks uh he said yes uh yeah. but I know. I, the sandy blonde hair just does it sometimes i don't know yeah, but uh, well, the picture i said come on of course <laughs> of course <laughs> how could i not <laughs> oh that's amazing and speaking of your dates i know you've got your tour dates out there looking sexy af and uh, i think you did toledo um ohio and tampa already and maybe some before that, Phoenix coming up at Tempe Improv, but was going to ask, how has it been getting back on the road after uh, and getting back in the swing of things? Or were you ever out of the swing of things? So, no, I was out of the swing of things. So I was it was like uh, March of last year when everything got canceled. So I slowly I was taking some random shows, but it was uh, I didn't do Toledo yet. Toledo's this weekend. So I'm in Toledo, Ohio. Oh, Friday. gotcha. Uh, but after TikTok took off, it, I've only done two weekends so far. I've done uh, Cleveland at Hilarities, and then I did uh, Tampa Improv in Tampa. And that it is insane. It's a whole, it's a whole flip. Like I was, I was telling people, I remember when like people didn't even realize, like I, I would have the good shows, but they were just walking off, like not, not just now, but like in the past, people just walking by like, hey, I think that was the headliner, man. Like, hey, great set. Like, I'm asking for the pictures. Hey, you guys want to get a picture real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Post it on my Instagram so people believe me. So, but now, it was just like just a, a total 180. There's there's lines both times. Every, after every show, the lines are just waiting for pictures. I couldn't sell my own merch this time. I had to bring someone to help me sell the merch. I couldn't, I didn't have time to do both. Like, they were telling me, hey, like, we gotta, gotta speed up these lines for the second show. And I've never been in that position before where I had to worry about getting people out of the show because they're taking too many pictures. I was like, this is, this is brand new, but it's awesome. I'm not going to complain oh, about it. So uh, that, 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 now, now mind you, this is just the beginning. This, this could be, this could be a real quick thing. You know, at some point, somebody's going to humble me. One of these cities are going to be like, no, we don't know who you are. <laughs> we have no idea. <laughs> there's there's going to be no line for pictures, you know, but it's so far, so far it's been well. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. And I was going to ask too, how has um, this new audience or this this built up audience through TikTok, have you found that 
they're aligned with your stand-up material? Or are they two separate audiences? Or are you finding it's just blending oh so beautifully, like at a Jamba Juice? Um, no, I I well, so technically I did a, a show before I went to Cleveland, a small show in Newark, uh, where we did two shows one night. And I did realize not like I didn't talk about TikTok at all in the first one. And I could mm -hmm. tell people were just waiting for it. And then at the end, they were still coming up. Like, hey, they were like kind of bringing it up. So the second one, I just kind of went out and mentioned some weird things that happened to me. And it was like, it hits as good as my best joke hits. Like when I talk about TikTok, that, so it's like, I realized I got to go there. So I have been writing more information just about it. But at the same time, I don't want to take the people that just come out and don't know who I am and, mm -hmm. and have, talk about stuff that they have no idea what I'm talking about. So I just kind of talk about weird situations. I kind of set it up so anybody can kind of go along with it. And, but I do explain a lot of this, these weird characters I came up with and weird situations since then. Uh, and then I just kind of walk out of that. I explain to them, it's not all my stand -up, So I walk out of that and I just walk into my stand up and it seems to go a lot smoother that way. Oh, that's really cool. And it seems like you are a person that is very aware of your audience. I was listening to a couple episodes of your podcast with Bobby Dodds and Kemi Mock and Belinsky, um, where the first episode, it was, um, oh, and I should mention the name of the podcast too, Comedians on South at High. Uh, exactly. Look at me, man. I'm just, uh, the details. Well, uh, anyway, you were talking about how, the first episode, you were talking about how you were at a college show, and it, you were like, well, the audience is a little different because it's college kids listening to a 36-year-old married man talking about stuff that they're like, I don't know if I care about this yet, et cetera. So it was, it was really interesting to hear about, you know, how you adapt to that and how you, in this example, bring up TikTok and, and bring up some of the characters, which is, which is awesome. And speaking <laughs> of the characters, I mean, you've created this Marvel universe of TikTok characters where you've got your son, Derek, you've got Blind Adam, Chad, Amy, Courtney, your wife, which doesn't make appearances but is mentioned often how, yeah. how did you end up going from uh or how did you end up starting and thinking you know what i'm gonna go into tiktok or i'm gonna go into this type of video content because it it kills it's so funny i don't know how i got there man i i basically it was when the pandemic kicked in and i knew i had a headline it set and i was headlining clubs but i was getting the off days so i could get like a thursday mm. day um when i did go out to other clubs where I had a great set, the booker would just talk about the set and then I would either get a call randomly or I wouldn't get any call. They're like, yeah, man, we're gonna book you. So I knew basically it just went down to, like, here's the thing, it went down to the fact that I was in Richmond, Virginia one time and somebody comes out like, yo, that was so funny. And he's like, you got an Instagram? And I pulled it up, he was like, how you only have 900 followers? And I was just like, I don't know. I just, I don't post anything. <laughs> I, he broke my heart because he had like 1100. So he was, he was trying to convince his <laughs> oh, father. I thought yeah. he was going to change his mind. That would have been awkward. He's like, Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't follow I you now. <laughs> no. So I, so I started trying to, I was really just creating weird content. That was anything. It, I, was, I used my real kids in the beginning. Um, and we were just, I was just doing whatever I thought was funny. I was really creating it on TikTok because I had no followers on TikTok. So mm -hmm. I could put because I've always had that issue, which I had to get over, was posting videos and people, not just anybody, but like certain people that I hang with, maybe comedians, just kind of looking at my stuff going, this is so dumb. What the hell is he doing? So I would post on TikTok, whatever I wanted to. And if I thought it was funny from there, I would take it and move it to Instagram. The only problem was people found out about my TikTok and so people started following it. So then I knew people on both platforms. So I was just posting until one day I posted a video. It was really a, a tweet that I did where I mentioned like kids eat free. And so the dad's telling a kid what to order for him. And so uh, <laughs> it was my biggest tweet I had. It kind of took my Twitter off. So like I turned it into a video. So I turned it into a video. And I just happened to use the name Derek. If Trust me, uh -huh. I'd have picked a better name if I knew that this character was going to stay there forever. I just went with this stupid video and everybody kept asking for Derek. They wanted me to bring him back. So I would uh -huh. bring him back doing these Derek videos and then yeah so then the characters just started coming in but the problem was if you go back far enough you can find where nothing really was always the same but people started making it the same they wanted to hear the same so they want to be like I, I thought Derek didn't have a brother like in the other video he was the only child but now he has now there, there's mention of an older brother so it's like 
they needed to be the same. So when I came up with Chad, I had to keep Chad and Amy always had to be Amy to the point now, like blind Adam and Chad both mention girls randomly. And it's, I know it's Stacy and Heather, but sometimes I forget who belongs to who I got to go look up all notes on all jokes. Like, okay, that's who that was. They, uh, there's a Randy Evans character that's mentioned randomly that never has, uh, he, you know, he's never seen, but he's just randomly mentioned. So now I always have this Randy Evans guy that just pops up on my, in my kind of comments, like it's him. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I just, and then he would keep asking for more characters. Here's the thing. I already had a few people hit me up on, not, not a lot, actually. I, I'm going to put up, I'm going to say it's less than a handful, but that I mm-hmm. thought the blind Adam character could be much. And not even friends, just people that were just offended by it. But I have too mm-hmm. many people that like it. But uh, so point being is other people send me stuff all the time. They're like, hey, man. You should have a deaf character, deaf character, and name him like uh, Deaf Darren. And it's like you guys are really trying to get me canceled. Like, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna sit there and, do, and here's the thing about at least a blind Adam, he's just wearing glasses, he's talking normal. He randomly don't see what's happening, but you can be lighthearted with that. Yeah. To, to a person, you actually gotta, you you really sound ignorant when <laughs> they're just doing this stuff. So I'm. But all the time, people have a lot of suggestions on different characters I should add to that. Like you said, a of characters I already have that seems like too many to even remember. The, the I, yeah, I was gonna say also to like get in place for each because they're all in the different positions. Yeah. So I'm sure coordinating the dialogue and then coordinating the shots for it and the and the outfits because they've all got the consistent outfits now. It's just a lot. Yeah. It is. It is. And and it's a lot to uh to for me to keep bending down. I'm too old for all this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know really what I'm doing. <laughs> I yeah. thought I thought that was a really subtle but nice piece. The first video that I saw, I think it was the one where uh, Derek was uh, talking about going to the doctor and talking about oh, and then I kiss him on the mouth, right? And then. <laughs> Uh, and, I, and I was just like, oh, I get it. He's he's down on the floor. He's the kid. It was it's those little details that make things fantastic. And yeah. um, oh, it's great. What and what have been have there been any suggestions that you're like, oh, I might go with that character? Probably not Deaf Daryl or whatever. But. No, you know what? Sometimes people give me a suggestion and then I'm like, that's not bad. But I, I have stuff that I'm already planning on doing and I can't think of anything. And then something hits me from a suggestion and I feel bad because I'm like, I get so many messages. I will never find that person that sent me that suggestion, but I would love to tag them and be like, suggest the buy. Because what happened recently where somebody was like, uh, you should do one where you say, we'll have to see. And then Blind Adam thinks he can't do it because you have to be able to see. And then I was like, oh, that's not bad. That's That's funny. And then it was like, Three months later, I was just in the hotel room and I remembered that and I was like, I do that now because when I'm in the hotel room, I just do video calls. And so I was like, I'll do it now. I did it. And I wish I could have, I wish I could have told, like, you know, just tagged him or something like, yo, so-and-so suggested this, but I couldn't remember who it was. I'm going to start to take it. Yeah, that's a good idea. I was just scrolling through the Q&A and just there are loads of suggestions, questions, and uh, lots of team adam by the or uh yeah team okay adam. You, you, you can see my you can see the questions to me yeah yeah i didn't know that i didn't know if that the people could see that okay that's cool i can see yeah i can see the questions and then the your responses to whichever ones where you do the video response okay yeah. okay i have to say i've never not that i'm on tiktok a bunch but i have never seen that before on a profile so maybe it's uh i don't know maybe it's a special thing for for you. Yeah, I don't know. I guess, yeah, I guess they, they do random stuff. So I know they send stuff out and they'll let it get tested out for so long. Like I know I had like a three minute video option before other people had it or, but then I saw other people that had like, you could see how many followers were active before you went live and they all had that like three months before I get it. So I think sometimes they send stuff out and let people try it out for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But uh, the q and I'll probably turn that off. I get a lot of questions on there. <laughs> And I feel back. Everybody wants to respond, but here's what I really do. I started going through and I just kind of respond to ones where I feel like it'd be funny if they read it wrong, but I could figure out how they would read it wrong. Like if I look at him and go, okay, that looks funny, right? Because he says idea and that looks like idiot. So now I could, <laughs> but so sometimes I'll do that, but. 
So they don't yeah. even get an answer. That's the funny. That's the best part about it. They all sit there and they take time. And I feel bad. They take time to come up with this question. And then when their question gets chosen, they don't even get an answer because I read it totally wrong. <laughs> And we just go off. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. And then as I was trying to do my research and compile the questions, I was like, oh man, I wonder if he's just not going to answer the questions. <laughs> but yeah. that's hilarious. I also, I have to say, speaking of video content, I was cracking up at the, I'll put in quotes and say it for our audio listeners, interview that you and Bobby Dodds did with a little show where... <laughs> Oh God. And and I saw a response from you where you a later post where you're like, people thought that was real. Yeah. Was that yeah. No, I think it was real. Like, here's the thing. I felt bad because I wrote the whole thing. Like we were trying to come up with an idea. We shot another a couple of videos in the past. So I was mm -hmm. like, let's do this interview where you're interviewing me and the responses, you're just you just talk to us like we ain't shit the whole time. So <laughs> I, I I wrote every response, his whole like, so you're audience all the sixth graders to all that like i'm and he was like hey man i appreciate that but like you made me the funny one of the video and and, I, and he was excited so i was excited so we posted yeah. it and then it turned into uh people were saying like he i showed him a post that somebody said and he showed me that same person who started following him and was like i'm only following you because i wish you die hopefully sooner than later you racist piece of shit and i was just like <laughs> you never so that it was that one that that made me go on there. But he's the thing is he already does weird stuff on his own. So he's already that guy that probably already gets people upset randomly and mm. says stuff. So he really does, it didn't bother him much. He'll just come on and say it's all peace and love. He kind of reminds me of like this hippie guy that doesn't even doesn't even care about life. Like he's that cool, young. He's so uh, he didn't he wasn't worried about it. But I still felt the need to post it because I was like, I here's the thing. My followers, they have, they, they have attacked people before, not physically, but if someone, like, if you see someone stealing my jokes, they will go on there and they will let them know. They will, they will all form, and it, it's, it's kind of insane at times. So, Dude, um, that's so funny. Yeah, I, I had to save them before they all went in on him and shut down. Oh. So nice move. It, it was, oh my gosh, masterfully done and really well written. I love the, the part where um, he was talking about one of your videos and he's like, my nine-year-old daughter watched that. Does that, and your, your response was just uh, like, in my defense, you're supposed to be 13. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, yeah. I don't want to spoil the whole thing, but it was so well done. And I saw a couple of videos that you guys had done together too, of like uh, you guys being directors for adult films and stuff yeah, yeah. and like jumping into the positions and, and everything. Just I so think good. I'm one was uh, the first one we kind of did together because it was uh it was called we called it light skinned and afraid and it was just basically yes. about being scared of full black people <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why that was so funny to me i just like yo that's just a funny concept like we're cool but only when we're around like light skinned it's full black <laughs> <laughs> and so we wrote this thing man that one turned out well i like that one uh, that one was so good. That one was really good. And Bobby did a great job of, uh, like, I guess, in your imaginations, being all menacing and everything. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then the whereas, like, I had to sit next to him. <laughs> it just pans out, and you guys are all just crunched together, just all petrified. Yes. Well, well done. Well done. Thank That's uh, some great stuff. Um, well, I, I was also just going to ask really quickly before we dive into the advice. I know, um, I think you'd mentioned it on the podcast as well, but you had started out or you were working at the bank, I think Chase Bank, and then I know Target at least at some point because uh, you were putting Cabbage Patch Kids on hold for yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for ladies. Um, but when, at what point or what age did you start getting into comedy? Oh, so I or can say it, it was 2000. I want to say it's 2006 or seven. I know, here's the thing. I know if I go nice. back to this small club in Cuyahoga Falls where I started the Funny Style Comedy Club, they would, I, know my, I know my names on there. I wrote on the wall and I put the date under there. And this was when I, I won a competition. So what happened was I was working at Target. And I was in Florida. It was an improv show. But it was a cool-ass improv show. We were just there on mm -hmm. vacation. But they were like, uh, if you want to, you can sign up for classes after the show. And I was like, yo, if we lived in Florida... I was, this would be cool as hell. If this was my job, I just came here and now you just did this and all these people are laughing. So when I came back to, when I was working at Target and they were all like, well, there's a comedy club like in Akron. So uh, I called and, they, and he basically just, 
answered the phone. He said, yeah, uh, I put you up next Tuesday. You have five minutes. And he kind of just hung up on me. <laughs> just, so I just knew I had to show up. So therefore I go that Tuesday and I watch because I find out it's competition and these guys oh. seem to let That's so why I wrote this little thing, this little five minute and somehow I made it through the first round. And then they chose three winners after like three rounds and it was me and two other people. So I wrote my name on their wall with the date under it. So it's like two months later after I start, I want to say it either says October 06 or October 07. <laughs> so, so it was, it was about 15 years ago. That's was that the competition where you got to open or do a guest spot for Gary Owen? No. So that's, that's in Columbus. So then I, uh, okay. Okay. I lived, I lived there for, I do it till 2009. I moved to Columbus. Uh, I have twins. So I, I, for a couple of years, I'm just off. And I started doing open mics and then there's a competition that my friends signed up for. So I signed up for this competition, uh, won this competition and I was able to choose someone to open for when they come to Columbus. So I went with Gary Owen at that time. Dang, dang. Look at, winning competitions left and right. That's... No, no I, I've listened. I, I've lost competitions. <laughs> I, I've been, I've been, I've been, I was in one where they were happy to tell me and I, I thought I won. I did so amazing. And they came up like, it was the owner of the club actually. And he was like, yeah, you were uh, disqualified because you put a certain word I said. And so therefore, and this was supposed to be like, uh, it wasn't really some TV stuff, but I was open. You would get to open for the, uh, death at a funeral that had like, uh, all those big people I forget, but it wasn't like a, the yeah. premiere. It wasn't like the main premiere. It wasn't going to be like in LA. It was like they were premiering in Cleveland somewhere. So I still was kind of perform for people that were there to see it, but not like Kevin Hart was going to be there from, I don't think he could, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I got disqualified from that competition. I did a competition up here that to go, go do Gotham. Uh, and I was excited and then I lost that competition. So no, I'm not winning competitions left and right. We just, we just happened to talk about two that I won. That's all. <laughs> Got it. We just sweep the other ones under the rug and we, yeah, we keep yeah, yeah. those. Oh, that's great. Well, that's awesome. We can go into and dive into the advice portion of the podcast, Jason. It's been swell so far. Um, I was going to ask, because I like to get nice and inspired with an inspirational quote before diving into these questions. Jason, do you have any inspirational quotes that you cling to when you're having a bad day? You can't think of some good content or... Um, I don't know. Anything else? Are you a cool no, guy? I, I don't have any inspirational quotes. All I can tell you is if, if the only thing that keeps me, this is, I don't know if it inspires me what the real word is, but I just really think to myself that none of this matters at all. Like at the end of the day, I'm in the green room before a show and I start to get nervous. I'm like, this really doesn't matter. And then they, the thing that would matter to me is if I got a call from home that said something happened here or something this. If somebody just came out and said, hey, 80% of the people just got mad at the show and walked out. Fuck it, I can go home. I can go get a job at Amazon at the warehouse. Like, I don't really have to do this. So it's not something that inspires me. It's just something that brings me to the realization of what keeps me going as family, I guess. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that really answers your question or if I took it way left, but let me just, that was my answer. Oh, taking it way left is is on brand with this podcast. But that's a beautiful. I, I, at first, I thought you were gonna be like, none of this matters. We're all gonna die, so it, none of it fucking matters anymore. So that's where I thought you were gonna go with it, and then it was like it's all about family. So it was a nice bow on that package that was almost macabre. So oh, I don't it. get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. We're all gonna die <laughs> <laughs> in the family. That's also gonna happen. But I wasn't but, going there. Yeah. Exactly. We are all going to die, but we'll, hopefully we'll have be buried right next to our loved ones and family. So it's really secondary in what it's all about. That's right. great. Good. Well, I feel inspired. I feel inspired. I also have a quote, an inspirational quote that I have. It's, um, it's not by any person whatsoever. It's actually by a robot and it's called Inspire Robot. And so it uses AI to take some of the wisest words from some of the ancient text scrolls, perhaps, um, Shakespearean plays, Bible, Torah, and it just mashes them together for a beautiful inspirational quote. It's not going to have the N-word, is it? <laughs> oh, that was only one time. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> is it? Okay, all right. When you, grab, when you started going so far back, I know, you, you know, I was just trying to think what all the words it was going to take. I didn't want this. I didn't want this. 
Well, you know, you like to go left on this podcast. That's your thing. That, that, that's fair. We don't go that far left. We don't okay. go. We don't go into the elephant graveyard. That's we don't stay there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. All, All right. right I'll so <laughs> I should have said that before your inspirational quote. I feel bad. Go ahead. <laughs> no that was amazing all right so this inspirational quote i'll read it you can tell me what it means to you jason but this week inspirobot says keep on growing your own vegetables Hmm. and that's it you think there was more oh oh, oh, keep on i mean at the end of the day i like that i feel like it's 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 a lot of deep thinking you got to think about it but at the end of the day um I'm having a situation right now where I have a, a guy that might start buying my merch for me and taking it to the airport and flying and selling it and not just me doing it myself and swiping my own. Like I said, I had somebody that have to help me, but now I might just have this guy in charge of it. But at the end of the day, I'm going to call him after the show and tell him that he's fired. I don't need him. I should grow my own vegetables. I'm going to tell him <laughs> you told me to do that now that I think about it. No, no, yeah. sandy haired blonde guy was telling then- me. You're absolutely right, though. If I don't need him. I, I don't need him to do this. I don't need him for these green beans. I grow my own green beans, take them there, sell them, make more money. Why am I split my profit? I appreciate yeah. you for pushing me in the right direction. I got to call him real quick. And you guys are. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, God. Oh, God. I feel so bad for this gentleman. I, th- I thought you were going to take it in the direction of like, he's your radish. Like, he's one of your vegetables that you're growing and cultivating is like one of. The, your garden of of Jason Banks, where you've got the fresh produce, like the lettuce, he's helping with the merch. You might have the agent, which is like a nice carrot, perhaps, can help yeah. you see your future um, with all that good vitamin A. And no more vegetable metaphors come to mind. But uh, yeah, I think you could also take it as in, fuck everyone else, they're all fired, and uh, I'm doing this all myself. <laughs> so <laughs> great interpretations. All right. Now that we're nice and inspired, we can just dive into the questions. So we've got this first one. It's from Reddit from their advice column. It says, advice on roommate not locking door. My roommate has been not locking the door for three months. Advice on roommate not locking door. It goes on, but that's basically the gist of it. The roommate is not locking the door. Have Have you ever had that happen? So I'm taking Jason? this as the roommate's not locking. Is it are they not locking the outside door or the bathroom door? Where are we taking this? This is the outside door. This is like the whole yes. yeah, the front so, door. Actually, uh, I don't want to mention this club, but there is one club. Uh <laughs> if Kimmy <laughs> didn't know if they work these this, they know who where it is. But there's one club where uh, I actually got there and they were like, Yeah, man, now mind you, I'm featuring. So I get there, like the condo's this way. Um, so he takes me to the condo across the street, basically. And right as he opens the door, he turns around and goes, by the way, I also stay here. And then he opens it to just, I just see stuff everywhere. There's, there's, there's dishes or piled in the sink. And it was just, you could, it just looked like his house, basically. So basically he was staying towards the back and then there's this room. And what happens is since he, the owner or the manager of the club, he would, uh, I would leave after my set or after the headliner got off, I would basically head out. And then he would uh, just wait till it's all closed down and come back. So he's coming back an hour after me. And then he's just opened the door and coming in and going to the back and sleeping. And here's the thing. I already felt bad because the key was placed outside to get in, but he didn't even give a shit. There, he had the key outside. He still didn't lock the door. So I would honestly wait about half hour after we went to bed, and I would sneak out real quietly, and I locked the door and shut it. So I was just like, "I'm, I'm not, I'm nowhere even close to my house. I don't feel, I don't know if this is a good neighborhood or not. Like I didn't feel safe. So um, yeah, if he, if he keeps, I don't know what my advice would be on that, man. I think you need a new roommate. Listen, I'm about to get rid of my uh, merch guy. We're all making big decisions here. You <laughs> could just. Get a new roommate, obviously, because there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do on that. That's what, you know what you could do is lock him out. Next time he comes home, he's not going to know what's going on. He's just going to have to be forced to stay out from yeah. forever. Yeah. Or, or technically, you could get those doors that lock automatically, but then you're going to lock yourself out a lot. Oh, but yeah. That, that just stay locked, and then that could work. And then he just can't get in if you don't have his key. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. I, I think God, the, the club owner that, that scares me a little bit. 
I, I, I thought you were going to tiptoe and just lock his door too, to just make sure that you were fully safe. I don't know where you were staying. No, on the he, couch. he was actually, he was actually cool. The only weird thing that I had with him was there was this weird interaction. I've I, listen, I've, I've watched movies. I don't like watching movies with people a lot. Oh, I watched, we watched game over. You ever seen game over with the guys from workaholics? Oh watched- yes. Yes. It was like yeah. a Braveheart kind of where yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so, so but here's the thing. There's so much, there's so many different funny scenes that randomly just hit you, but I've never, I've never, I've never done this before. Every time something funny would happen, he would look at me dead in the eye every time. And it happened about every, every two minutes. So we just be watching the movie and he just start cracking up and he'd look at me. So I have to keep looking at him and just, I don't know, just smile at him. I don't know what he's doing. I was, <laughs> I was like, Yo, don't keep me up all night. I got to get up until in the morning to lock this door when you're in bed. You know? So that was a weird that- But he's a really good guy. If he's if he ever sees this interview, just know he's a great person and I appreciate him and I'll see him soon. That's, that's <laughs> but awesome. luckily, luckily I'm a headline. You know what? It's, I'm a headliner now, but my feature is actually my really good friend. So I kind of, usually I get a hotel room for him, but I kind of want him to stay at the condo on this one, just in case he's still staying there at the condo. I want him to deal with what I dealt with one time. I need him to realize, I need him, I need him to do two things. I need him to stay with him. And then I need him to watch game over with him and to see how his, see what kind of night he has. His, his piercing gaze as he laughs over him. Yeah. Also, I, I said Braveheart, but I meant Die Hard, uh, the theme. I oh, was... you know what's so crazy? Here's the crazy. I've never seen Die Hard or Braveheart, but I know both movies. And when you said Same. Braveheart, I, I was thinking Die Hard when you said Braveheart. That's so funny. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about Braveheart, but you're right. You did say that. If we were sitting next to each other, I would have turned to you and laughed at that. Bad. Stop doing that. That's, that's what I tell my friends. I'm more of like, I'm, I'm addicted to my friends. Like, this my friends with me and they're doing that, but stop doing that. Stop looking at me and smiling. Like, I don't like them. <laughs> when it's just like a club owner, you just got to keep smiling with him. It's weird. That is so funny. I haven't thought, of, I, I hope that's part of one of your bits, but I, I haven't thought of that, but it is really funny how I will have to turn to, it's just like an obligation where they turn, you feel them turn and I am a nice guy. So sometimes I'll be like, okay, I'm trying to make them feel included. So then I'll turn, but it's not that funny of a moment. So yeah. then, then they feel inclined to turn to me and they're like, what are you doing? And so it, it becomes awkward for yeah. both of us. Yeah, I understand completely. I'm, I, don't, I don't talk to people, man. That's why I don't have any friends. <laughs> Oh, well, that's, uh, you're, you're, I don't know why I'm trying to comfort you. You're an amazing person. You, you know this already. Um, all right, moving on to the next question. The last question, it says, I don't know what to say to my friend about their writing. My new friend, we are both right around 30. I don't know their exact age shared with me recently that they wrote a book and suggested that I check it out. I did. It was confusing, full of errors and weird. I would just not bring it up, but I feel like maybe they're sort they're the sort to ask what I think, but I don't want to hurt their feelings. They are a really nice, friendly person. I don't want to be misleading, but I also don't want to be completely upfront and honest. Help? Ooh. All right. So the true thing they should do, the real thing is they should basically tell them that it does have some errors in it. There's some maybe words misspelled or whatever. And mm-hmm. that they probably go get that. And then ask the other thing, let them know it wasn't their style. Some people might not like it, uh, but that's just what they should do. Now, my advice is tell them it was amazing. But <laughs> that's what I do all the time. I, I have a lot of people, because I go to these, like wherever, they'll just, they just think because I'm, I'm who I am, I, I can tell them if their joke is the best joke or not. And I don't, I never want to hurt anybody's feelings. So besides the people that open up, open up for me, I'm like, yo, you got to work on the ending of that joke. But for the <laughs> most part, it's the best joke I ever heard in my life. You can tell me right now, you can say, listen, man, this is a joke I wrote and I would be amazed right now. I'll sit there and be like, bro, seriously, I'll give you 500 for that joke. I'll give you $500, please let me buy it. I've never bought a joke in my life. Let me buy that joke. And then we get off here and you would message me like, hey, man, my cash app. I'm like, I don't give a shit about that. <laughs> I'm be nice. Leave me alone. <laughs> tell them it's a great book. You have to tell them because at the end of the day, unless, unless 
I don't know. I could, I have my, my little brother holds grudges, so I was gonna say unless they're family, you might need to be real with them. But my little yeah. brother holds grudges, so I lie to him too about whatever. Sometimes you have to lie to people, man. That's just what it is. I agree I'm with sure. you. I feel like I mean, if we learned nothing from the Dark Knight, basically it was lie because Batman lied that he killed Two Face, and the public was angered, but he was still able to be undercover and save them. So, I mean, if nothing, lie. I think that's lie. the best way. I think lie, lie, whatever you can. Sometimes lie just for fun. Sometimes it's fun just to lie. Oh, just- it's, it's like good practice. It's like going to the gym and getting your muscles swole. You're just exercising that lie muscle. So when, it ca- when you need it, you can get in there and people are like, oh yeah, okay, okay, great. Yeah. That is a <laughs> like, great joke. Like- but I mean, it's for fun. Like, listen, we was at my kid's <laughs> baseball game and my daughter, she is, I think she's 10. She could be 11. And she says, she goes, so the guy, the guy pitching, he's the pitcher, right? We were like, yeah. She's like, and the guy catching, we say like, the catcher. And she goes, but the guy that's hitting the ball, I know he's not the hitter. What is he? And my wife just goes, he's the mongoose. And she was like, oh, the mongoose. Now, listen. That was it. We laughed in our head. We let it go. Right? I mean, like, a week later, we're at practice, and we're just sitting there. My son's out practicing, and a guy goes up the bat. She goes, don't tell me. Mongoose. We're like, yeah, that's right. The mongoose. That's exactly what it is. So it's been, at this not mind, this ain't too long ago. It's been about a month, maybe a month and a half. And so it's still going on. She mentioned it the other day at a baseball game. I'm not sure when we're going to break it down to her. But uh, yeah, if they ask stupid questions, I, that's the bad thing about it. Because my kids are going to grow up and be 40 years old and just be confused with all of life. <laughs> we're never going to break down and tell them all the things we lied about. She's going to be like, yeah, the mongoose is the hitter. <laughs> you know um, what, though? I feel like you're kind of training them to be able, because once uh, they find out, then they're going to not trust anybody. So in that case, they're, you know, if, if the media comes at them with these blanket statements, they're going to be like, no mongoose did not yeah, bomb yeah. syria and yeah, that, you know they'll be able to question things so yeah. i feel like you're doing them a favor so once they find out they're like dad it's not mongoose you'd be like you're welcome that lesson right <laughs> but not my son my son knows but my daughter she's uh she's still, i think we gave her nothing the other day with you yeah, i'm sorry i gotta tell him the truth matter of fact thank you you you've helped me today Theater, because i'm gonna tell my daughter that it's, it's they're the batter not the mongoose I'm firing my merch guy, absolutely. I'm gonna go ahead back and watch Braveheart and Die Hard. And then, you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back and watch Dark Knight because I don't remember that lie at all. <laughs> oh shit, oh no! I, oh well, I, so this, I've seen- thing, Remember, if you're talking to me about a movie, don't ask me about a good movie because most likely I was confused or I didn't make it through the movie. Now, if you ask me about a kid's movie, most likely I can answer it because I either saw it when I was a kid and I was paying attention or my kids will definitely watch that movie eight times. So now I'm all caught up. Like, you know, I watched Tenet. No, great. Did you see Tenet? No. Oh, what, what was it called? Tenet. Uh-uh. T-E-N-E-T. It's like uh, Denzel Washington's son. Great movie. Just, it came out, uh, it was after the pandemic, but I got to go to this little Looney Bin tour. I think it was like in August. So they put mm-hmm. it in theaters. The theaters were just kind of starting to open. And it was uh-huh. a great movie. But I, I couldn't. I told my wife when I came home, I said, I needed you at the movie. But I need to ask her about 10 <laughs> times during the movie. Like, so wait, what's going on? Because I get oh, so man. confused. Where she knows immediately what's going on as soon as it starts. I mean, a brand new movie no one's seen. All of a sudden, a guy will walk out, a girl will walk out, and then she'll look at me and she's like, he, he's going to kill her and marry her sister. I'm like, how did you know that? <laughs> She, she can tell from the beginning. She catches on fast. That is so funny. I Because I'm the same as you. I cannot understand, even if I've seen it several times. So what I try to do is if my wife is like, we want to watch this new period piece, um, which I thought was a tampon at first, but we ended up going to see it. And I do my research. I watch the trailer. I read the bio. I read the reviews. So almost I know exactly what's going to happen. And still... I don't know, sometimes the British dialogue gets me or something. It's just so complicated. I either lose I interest. Think that I, I want to do that. I, I always, I never thought about reading the reviews where they just explain the whole movie to you, you know? I mean, I do that. 
I've done that for other movies. Like I've never seen Pulp Fiction. So people are like, have you never seen Pulp Fiction? So I'm like, all right, let me just read the review so I can catch up on this and see what's going on here. So that, but that, here's, you know, here's the here's what I'm gonna say. You don't even understand. If I told you how many times I've watched movies that I shouldn't have watched compared to the perfect movies I've never watched, like do you understand how many times I've watched Dangerous Minds? Have you ever watched Dangerous Minds? Do you know what that movie is? No. Is it like Braveheart? No, 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 no. <laughs> but listen, Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay, you'll get the song. Michelle Pfeiffer was a substitute teacher, and Coolio's "Gangsta Paradise" was like the big song from the movie. Oh, and okay, okay. So it was like an old school movie. I probably watched that movie over sixty times in my life. Like we rode to Florida as kids, and I don't know why, why I'm watching this as a kid, but we watched it in this little VCR tape in the van that had a VCR somehow, and we watched this like over and over on the way there, on the way back, while we're going to Disney, on the way back to Disney. But I've never seen like Pulp Fiction. I've never seen some really good movies: Brave Hard, Die Hard, The Patriot. I only watched oh. 300. My white friend invited me to his house, and I was like, "What are we doing here?" They like, we watched 300. And he was mad too because they had cigars and they, everybody was smoking. Like they all went out and bought these expensive cigars. And they're like, we're smoking cigars man, on the porch. And I was like, I'm, I'm smoking a cigarette. I'm not going to smoke a cigar. I don't care about this. <laughs> I don't even want to watch this movie. But it's a good movie. I enjoy 300. I would watch it, was, it again. It was pretty good. Yeah. And <clears throat> a lot of that makes sense. Some of my white friends, they also have the collection of like all of those movies you just mentioned and then have those watch parties. So I don't know. It's like a a big thing to some people but for me I'm half white i just i just it's just my white friends don't want to do this <laughs> i i will say really quickly too my parents when we just got a dvd player we had th we could only afford three dvds so we watched dudley do right an extremely goofy movie and runaway bride with julia roberts and richard gear like 45 times those were the movies that we could watch so that sounds horrible <laughs> it was it was terrible uh brendan frazier's worst work out of all in dudley do right it was just yeah. not not great so but anyway. I, like, I still like kid movies like even like right now if tomorrow in the theater they said we're putting out two new movies we're putting out beauty and the beast 2 or we're gonna put out i don't know pulp fiction 2 i'm watching beauty and the beast every time you know how excited you know how much i like musicals and i should well, i was in new york to perform at the Apollo Comedy Club. They had my name on the marquee. I was excited. And I was like, listen, we're going to stay past this date because when I'm done, I want to do something New Yorkish because obviously before this show, I'm going to be nervous. So mm -hmm. we, I do it that night. So the next night, it's on a pop. And then we went to, uh, I went to watch Chicago, the musical. And uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. was in it, which was cool too. Uh, Dang. So I don't know why, but yeah. But yeah, that was, that was fun. Oh, that's awesome. That's but, uh, you know what the sad thing was? After my performance at the Apollo, it was late. It was the Apollo Comedy Club, so it's late. So we're like, I'm done performing though, so let's go have a good time. So we, we go and we start drinking. And it's me and my wife and uh, my brother and his wife and one of their friends from New York. And uh -huh. for some reason I was like, uh, well, tomorrow I kind of want to go see like some musicals <laughs> or something weird, you know? So, but I also... I also really want to see, uh, I also want to see like where the train center was at, you know? They were like, we can do that tonight. And it's, it's open, like all the time. So I was like, all right, let's go. So we went and it just ruined my night, right? Like it's 11 <laughs> drunk, I'm having a good time. And then next thing you know, you just go in there and you hear voices from the people that are telling their stories. You hear the phone calls from the plane. You hear all this and we just walk out. I didn't think we said anything. We just went down and just got on the on the subway and just rode back to the hotel like we should not have went there after the show we should have been, that should have been after breakfast so we had time to catch ourselves that, like i know he's getting ourselves into this it broke my heart there's something magical about the new york train and subway stations where uh, my wife and i we used to live in new york city or we used to live in jersey but we work in manhattan so, so we would take the trains often and there's that point especially in friday nights you get a little drunk then you go to the station and there's some magical aura around it that puts you in the worst drunk state where you might just feel a little bit sick or a little bit nauseous uh, or angry and just the worst type of people there. And it's grimy. I think that uh, it's, it's just so bad. 
listen, can you can you put kids on that throughout the day? That that was my thing. I was like, I couldn't move to I couldn't imagine putting like a 15 year old on here by themselves. It seems like I, I would have to ride with them everywhere to go. Like if they had to go to practice, or do I just live close to practice? They shouldn't be on a train, right? Oh, I just yeah. to think of like, how do kids go on that? Like I'm a grown man. I'm over 30 years old at this time and I'm still scared. Like I said, some one guy was like uh it was, I was walking down the street and he's like, hey, man, you got some money so I can get some weed? And I just jokingly back was like, no, man, but you know where I get some weed with all this money? And, bro, he just got mad as shit. He started yelling. My mom's there because she's here for the performance. So she's behind me. She was like, what did you say? Just walk, Jason. Just walk. <laughs> like, he has <laughs> not freaked out. So it's like, I couldn't imagine living in New York. These people, I, I, I'm scared of letting my kids play in the front of my house now. I just live in this little suburb. I couldn't imagine being in New York. They, I keep them in the living room all the time. I would just teach them myself. Oh, yeah. They need like 15 extra vaccinations and four guardians to be able to get outside. Because it's, I mean, if Batman was real, we'd need him there for the kids oh, if they're riding alone on the subway. Rat killed me, all the rats in the subway. I was like, this is crazy. They're the, cele- <laughs> they're the true celebrities. I, when I was Everybody there, was there was excited. pizza rat. And then I think they had, I don't know, like French fry rat. They had all these rats that could just carry these gigantic pieces of human food. Yeah, yeah. They're going to take over one day. Yeah, that that was weird to me. Yeah, yeah, the rats. Oh, man. Well, there's a mouse in my house. I freaked out. (laughs) Could imagine a rat. I saw an alligator on the side of the road in Florida. That's ridiculous. Can you imagine just an, you just get out the car and the alligators right there? Like, bro, oh. I'm in these places. I'm staying here in Ohio. I ain't got time. Oh, my right. God, dude. Yeah. What do they have in Ohio? Arizona, the, the most the threatening thing is the, well, the rattlesnake and then the scorpion, which is just always, like, threatening you. You know, it's always. It, it, um, no. Oh, no. But that, thanks, thanks for informing me. This is, I got to look for scorpions. Are you for real right now? That's, that's something I got to worry about when I'm there. I literally, every time before I open my shoes or get my feet in my shoes, I hold them up and, and give them a little tap just in case I a do little that scorpion. I sit mine in the basement because if I mow the, for the mowing shoes, I mow the grass and I put them back down in the basement because I don't leave them in the garage because I'm worried about the spiders. But like I've seen big enough spiders where I'll, some, like I'll put my hand up there, even though that's even worse, just so I'm more comfortable putting my foot in there and walking around for the next 40 minutes, right? And I'm like, let me just make sure. Let, let it bite me now before it surprised me halfway through mowing the grass. I gotta do that for scorpions for real? Like, I'm definitely gonna see a scorpion when I'm in 10 feet. Is that what you're telling me? I don't like that at all. Scorpions yeah, there, else. There is like a, I don't, I, since I've been here the last two and a half years, I have seen zero scorpions in our house. So I think you'll be, it's, it's just areas, I guess. They, they're, they're in certain neighborhoods, I guess. Cause in Tempe, I don't think I've heard a lot, but in the surrounding areas, oh, they're there and in droves. Don't bring a, a black light. I would say, because I think just leave it to the imagination that scorpions are not there. Yeah, right. but scorpions, rattlesnakes, but you don't, unless you go hiking, I don't think you have to check for those. And then we also have coyotes. Um, we have some brown recluses, I believe, and black widows, but I've never seen those either. So you're, yeah, you're I, most, I, yeah, you're most likely fine like 75 yeah. percent chance you're okay we'll see we'll see if i still come i'm gonna talk to my agent after this call <laughs> end up in tempe right, right right after you fire your merch guy <laughs> just get on the <laughs> exactly um, oh man well jason it has been an absolute blast to have you thank you so much i just wanted to end off with plugs if you got anything you'd like to plug where can people follow you what have you got going on well, hold on. Wait, first of all, this is, if I unplug and when's this being released? Is this a live or we're releasing this? I oh, no, sure. we're, we're releasing this on Monday, next Monday. Monday. So I will, okay, so I, 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 still, I still have time to promote Tempe. Then. I, we oh, yes. This. So definitely the Tempe Improv from uh, the 18th to the 20th. Buy some tickets and buy your friends some tickets. But nice. the tickets are selling. That's what's up. Um, uh, no, as for that, just follow me on my TikTok and my Instagram and my YouTube, all Jason Banks comedy. Uh, check me out on Laugh Moms Laugh Tracks, which is on True TV and HBO Max, and my podcast, Comedians on South High. That's it. Oh, and and all you know what, guys, if you're like, oh my gosh, it's so many links, it's not. Calm down, and also they're going to be in the show notes, so you can just get your dainty little thumb and click on them, and then or 
pound them. I don't know what the right word is, but you can go on over there. I know we didn't get to talk about the laugh tracks, but those were all phenomenal bits or sets. And um, I also was laughing and I was going to ask you, how did you feel about the guy that played you in each one? I think it was a different guy each time, right? Yeah, yeah. So actually, I'm cool with all of them. The first one was Mike Dam, which was cool. Um, he, I, I thought he did amazing. The only problem with Mike was Mike was already big with Dormtainment. So a lot of people thought it was Mike Dam's joke. So a lot of people were just like, oh, I didn't know Mike did stand up. Mike's so funny. Because the first one, they did show me walk on stage. But some people just don't. When they, when they post it online, sometimes they just post that clip. They don't post me walking on stage. Uh, second one was uh, the uh, genuine bit, which actually was Tech from Real World. So I thought that was cool because he, uh, and now Tech's, Tech's a good guy. I met him a couple of times. After that, it was a guy named Brandon Hairston that actually uh, is very funny. If you're ever in uh, Hobby Lobby, do you guys have Hobby Lobbies where you're from? We do, yeah. yeah. If you're ever in a Hobby Lobby and you're looking at one of those, uh, if you're looking at like one of those picture frames, he's just the guy in the picture frame before you take it out. You know, this is random black guy. <laughs> running through meadows and stuff. <laughs> and then him and I actually, we ended up writing a movie, right? So as the pandemic kicks in, as I'm doing this, I'm starting to uh, make money off TikTok. So I don't really have a job this time. TikTok's taking care of this. Uh, I just had time to, to write. So I would sit down with him every day, man. We would basically write it. He's, he, was in, um, he was in LA at the time. I think he just moved, but he was in LA at the time. So we wrote this whole movie. Which actually was technically, it could be a good movie. And then I don't know what happened to it. We finished it. We had these people looking at it. And then um, I kind of went this direction with this. I know he's still doing whatever he's doing. Um, as if this movie ever come about, I don't know. But I thought, I mean, it was just a random concept of just like a comedian trying to make it. But just uh -huh. the way we wrote it, like a, the way he moved from Michigan to L.A. and the weird stuff that happened. It, it seemed like a good comedy movie. Um, but... But well, and then I, I really felt really good about the beginning and the end. You know how you have uh -huh. like this beginning of a movie, then the end ties back, and you're like, "Oh, that was pretty good." How the that tie back? Like I thought yeah. we had an amazing tie back with the end of the movie. So like the middle, as long as we make it funny, it's gonna have a good opening, good end. I thought it was good. We'll see if that something ever comes with that. But yeah, and then the last one was just me as a kid. So then it was little kids playing me at that time, at that point, which they did their little thing. Nice, that, nice, that nice. I love that praying to Michael Jackson and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. beautiful. You know what's crazy is I had to, I, the funniest part about that is the <laughs> first joke I did was not just supposed to be that joke. The first laugh tracks I was doing this joke about a gay cop, right? They were like, "Yo, it's hilarious. We want to put this on laugh tracks." So I put it on. I, I go there. I they were like you basically got to make sure you do the same exact set word for word. I get there and they give me the audio from when I recorded the jokes and they go make sure you listen to your audio and you want to start out word for word. So it'll start you out and then it'll kind of go into the audio. So I mm -hmm. learn it. I go, well, I go downstairs and I play it. And it's the joke about women. It's the joke about like the women with a tattoo on her back and all that stuff. And I kind of go back like, Hey, this ain't the joke that I'm, this is, this is another part of my set. I think they recorded the last part of my set and they were mm -hmm. like, uh, they like, here's the thing. They, we thought we were going to get approved. They didn't approve the joke. They just, they weren't going to do a gay cop on true tv so we had to cut that one out and just use this other one instead so i did those ones the first time right oh. cut to my last one the joke about catching my parents has nothing to do with praying to michael jackson it actually has everything to do about the gay cop who was my cousin who at the end i catch my parents so now i'm trying to call the cops yeah. and the cops there and so it went to that so when i get to this last one i have to switch it up so they're like yo we love to catch the parents um but of course there's that gay cop again right so i had to, i had to, so all i was like well, i was like i got this joke where i prayed to michael jackson so i could try to write it more about that so then i had to gear that all towards about how they would play michael jackson and go upstairs and mm -hmm. i had to do that because i couldn't use my normal punchline to the joke you know so if you ever come to my shows you'll see that some of these jokes are just have different pieces from different jokes put into them because they just needed me to do stuff to them. I had to rearrange them and fix them and stuff, but yeah. Oh my God. That, that is super cool that you're able to do that. Just, it's like a big puzzle, just rearranging the pieces or I guess just making new pieces and being like, this is where this goes. So yeah. that's awesome, man. Oh man. Wasn't that a great episode? I was delighted.
to listen to that. I know you were too, especially since you made it this far. Thank you so much, everyone who's listened. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, review, comment on YouTube, subscribe there too. Subscribe everywhere you can. It helps with stuff, algorithms, and, uh, and, and everything. It helps with me. I mean, my ego, ego rhythms. That's what it really helps with. So thank you guys for all your support. Support Jason too. Go see him live at the Tempe Improv. Links are in the show notes for that. And that's it. That's all. I'm just going to leave you with that sweet little outro, just like a, a petite four, but I guess at the end. So like a DJ Steve, maybe like a limoncello. So just boom, slide it down your throat and go to sleep. Doesn't matter if it's morning. Take a nap. Treat yourself. All right? Thank you. Love you. Mwah. Gooch smooch. Bye-bye.